The next question is, what is the impact of dropout on the training versus testing? When we were discussing the dropout, I briefly mentioned that dropout is only applied on the training data, which means that we are only randomly deactivating the activations uh, as part of our training process. But this also means that the neurons have smaller and specifically 1 minus p probability of being activated during the training process. So we are reducing the probability of a neuron to be selected for being activated. And this will then introduce inconsistency when it comes to the testing process, because we are applying the dropout only during the training. This also means that we need to address this reduce in the activation probability when we are performing the testing. So given that P percent of the neurons during the training are dropped or deactivated, we need to compensate for this and we need to ensure that we have consistency in the input size. And for that, what we need to do is that we need to scale the activations in the testing by 1 minus p. And in this way, we will then compensate for the small probability difference that we were making when we were dropping out certain activations. So just as an example, if the dropout rate is 20%, so 0 0.2, this means that during the training process, the neurons have 80% probability of being activated and 20% chance of not being activated. It means that during the testing, we need to scale the activations by using 0 0.8, so 1 minus p.